What's up and welcome! Hello everybody! Today I'm working on the sound effect for this Courage Up animation. So far I've just thrown in, <laughs> I'm using it as inspiration. Hey! Rocket Bunny, what's up man? How you doing Rocket Bunny? I'm using as inspiration the uh, the Super Mario mushroom sound. So here's the inspiration. I'm, I'm gonna go and craft my own sound here in Massive and Ableton, but uh, this is the inspiration. Second, what's up, sound dogs? Did you guys hear that? Did you guys hear the Mario sound? <laughs> I used the Mario sound as a blueprint for the timing and everything. I'm like, hey, yo, that, that works. I had to stretch it out like a little bit, but. All right, all right, so it's time to start crafting this sound. How you guys doing? What's up? Rocket Bunny, how you been, man? Thanks, Sound Dongs. Yeah, the animation started out lame. You know, it's like, oh, this is kind of boring. It's just all white. And then I worked on it all day yesterday, and it got better and better and better. But then finally, the last hour, the very last hour of working on it, it just suddenly was like, whoa, now it's now it's all clicking. It's weird. It's weird how, it's weird how that always works. It's like for at least for me, like it always all comes together at the very last moment. I'm good. Oh, school's annoying, huh? Oh man. What grade? What are you in now? What what grade or what level of school are you at? Are you in Are you in what we would consider high school in the United States now? Or are you in like like a middle type of school or something? Do they have middle school in the Netherlands? Is that too loud? Hope I'm not blaring out your guys' speakers here. I could turn it down if it's too loud. You are, you're right before high school. So what do they call that? What's that called right before high school? So this, I'm gonna start, there's two halves to this sound effect. There's a beginning. And there's this nice silence. And then there's this, um, this, this nice silence, it was so difficult to make. And then, um, and then this sort of explosion sound. So I'm gonna, I'm, first I'm gonna focus on the explosion half. It's the gun, it doesn't have enough bass for me yet. It's like, it doesn't have enough like, oomph. I think I'm gonna go copy the, um, the puzzle sound. There's, the, I think it's this. Yeah, it's a com combination. Combination of those two. You're in primary school. Oh, okay. And high school is secondary school. Ah, and then college is uni. Yeah. So why is it why is it annoying, man? It's because you have to be there on time and stuff. I hated I hated going to school on time. I would have loved to have go to gone to school whenever I wanted. That would have been great. It just sucked having to be there on time all the time. I don't really like appointments. <laughs> but I guess they're necessary, right? Get people together at the same time, same place. I think I already copied this puzzle sound. Yeah, yeah, I got this out of here. Puzzle, puzzle, puzzle. Open recent. Courage up. We'll see what it sounds like with the puzzle sound in here, too. Oh, it's really early, huh? 7.30? Dang, man. Dang. Yeah, it's probably late for you right now, huh? It's four o'clock here. What's it? Eight, nine hours? I think you're nine hours ahead. That's, um, 
1 a.m. Is it only? It's only 1 a.m. <laughs> that's that's late though. If you got school at 7:30, that's late. Yo, congratulations, Salad Dogs. 39 points. There you go. Bam. All right, cool. But I don't want this last tail. This tail is too distinct. This is exactly like the other sound effect. I just want that boom at the beginning. Yeah, it is 1 a.m. Whoa! Yeah, meaty and lasery. Totally, totally technical terms. Uh, that's how sound effects are, though. That's the first thing you gotta learn about making music and sounds is that you gotta start throwing around technical terms like that to describe things, because that's really the only way you can describe it. Meaty, punchy, you know, like all these like sound terms. I'm pretty sure they are actual technical terms somewhere. Somebody's technical audio book probably has them. What I'm going to do is throw on a limiter on top of this because it's I'm clipping the sound out, but it, it might actually need this clipping to sound right. I don't know. So I'm going to try throwing on a ceiling. Oh, let's do, um, uh, let's make this upper ceiling. I think that's a little different. Yeah, it's a little different. We got a release. Oh, release was auto. What's the difference here? Yeah, I guess it's just release auto. This is the same thing. All right, but that's pretty good. So let's see, is it sound any worse like that? Okay, so master, let's turn off the limiter, see if it sounds better. There's a little more punch this way. I think I might just leave it like this. Let it clip, let the sound effect clip out, who cares? You've been watching the stream for nearly a year now. Oh, congratulations, Gold Star. Here, let me give you some points. Wait, yeah, rock, yeah, I can give you some points. Here, there's your yearly points. Yearly reward. Hey, it works. It seemed a little distorted, like it was peaking. Yeah, exactly. That's the that's that's what I was just doing there. I was checking to see if limiting it would would prevent it from distorting, but it actually sounds better with it distorting. And um, and when it actually when Ableton renders this out, it's not going to be that much. It actually does a really good job of not making it clip too bad. Ableton's a really great DAW. I really like it. It's very simple. Um, I've worked with lots of DAWs. I've worked with Logic, GarageBand, Fruity Loops, Acid, Pro Tools a little bit. <laughs> it's over 9,000! Over 9,000? All right, now this is also very characteristic. This sound effect is, is very characteristic of the meditation sound. Both of those are sounds I kind of want to reuse anyways to kind of create a theme as far as audio goes in this game. So this is good that I'm doing this, but I would like to try messing with the, like transposing it a little bit. Basically, we're just gonna pitch it up a little bit or down a little bit to see if that would sound a little bit more unique for this individual sound here. So maybe like, Lower. Hmm. Okay, let's see what this is sounding like so far. Over nine thousand.
It is. It's actually some pretty good bass. I like this bass part of it. I'm actually wondering if I want this um, this top part, which is a befixer sound. Let's open up a fixer again. Oh, I think befixer even has the memory and all that. It was. It was pretty good, right? The bass was sounding good there. I think. I had a good feeling. Let's go to randomizer. Is that it? Ooh, watch out. Sorry guys if that's too loud. The fixer can be really loud. Turn it down some more. Yeah. Okay, if what is this uh I'm gonna try mutating this. Hmm, that was kinda cool. Whoa, that was that's horrible now. Bad. What's school like in America? Well, each each level of school is really different. You know, like middle school is different than high school, is different than university. But as far as our middle schools go, or at least where I was I grew up in Oregon, it was I don't know. I didn't. I I disliked middle school, personally myself, because people were quite. The kids in my age at that point were very. Uh, they picked on me a lot. You know, I got picked on a lot in middle school, and it just really kind of sucked. <laughs> but then high school got cool. High school was like I started getting more respect, for I started figure, figuring out who I was. I guess it's kind of a personal thing, you know, right? going through school and stuff you're growing up and things like that we had classes we had like um six or eight classes a day something like that each one was like 45 to minutes to an hour long we would get a little lunch break you know school Yeah, it's like yours, yeah. Well, if you're getting if you're getting picked on too, I don't know if it's like that for you, but if you are, you got good you got good news ahead of you, man. Eventually, those kids will grow up and they just won't be picking on you anymore, and you'll figure out who you really are and you won't care that people ever picked on you or you won't care what they think about you. You know, you'll grow up and, and you'll get stronger about it all. All right, let's play with this randomized 72 one. That sounds kind of cool. Let's hear it in the game with the animation. <clears throat> Sad dogs, man. What about you? How's it going with the engine? What you been doing? I'm liking this. This is cool. I like it with a little bit of that echo in here. I think I want to put this on a different layer though. In case I want to play around with um, the EQing and stuff on... In fact, I think I'll do that right now. I'll play with the EQ a little bit. I'm going to equalize this sound here. Which means I'm going to throw on a... There's two two effects I'm using here. 
I'm going to use an EQ8, which will allow me to do eight different um, EQ adjustments. It could go in a bass drop? Good. Oh, good. Yeah, it's supposed to have a, a lot of bass, but not too much bass. It shouldn't like... Well, actually, I should check that really quick, huh? Let me check that really quick. So quickly that it'll be it'll just be really quick. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm using two tools to to um, to dial in the the frequencies here, and that is an EQ8, which allows me to adjust, and a Spectrum, which allows me to see. I think the newer versions of Ableton combine these two tools, which is like duh. Logic already has those these built in. Logic has an excellent EQ plugin and all that. Also, you can use your own plugins if you're using your own plugins. It's awesome, I'm sure. There's a lot of great EQing plugins out there. Allow you to see what see what you're doing and adjust what you're doing at the same time. Duh. Oh, that is pretty bassy. That's too bassy. We need to take some of this out. All right. I wonder if it's the puzzle or if it's this. Start with this one. See, that is just below. Like above negative 12 is going to be too loud. It's probably this sound then. Yeah, that's a really cool sound, but it's just blaring the heck out of the lower sub region here. And this right here. Okay, so we're going to EQ this one first. In Songbreaker's Rock Like His Own Class, we've gone for less OO. Yeah, no OO. I'm not doing any OO. I'm, it's all an entity component system. I've sh I'm sure you've heard me mention that before. Um, entity component systems are a way of developing your game without OO, no object oriented. It's all composition, favoring composition over object oriented hierarchies. And you can develop in, you can develop your, you can write your game in C++ without really using object oriented stuff so much, you know. Technically, yes, I'm using object oriented stuff all over the place. But really, it's not the focus. The focus of the game engine that Songbringer uses is using an entity component system, which is called Entity Foods on GitHub. I released it and stuff. So it's out there. But yeah, you've used Unity, right? You pl Have you played with Unity yet? Unity has everything as an entity already, entity component systems. You compose an entity out of a bunch of different components. You have like a render component, you have a movement component, you have an input component, you have a sound component, whatever. You have all these little components, you compose it together to create an object, rather than an object being a hierarchy of thorny code, spaghetti code, that you eventually have to go, you know, unbreak, sort out, untie, decouple. Actually, I think I'm going to take a little roll off one here. We'll take this. We'll put it right around 168. That's a lot softer. That's too soft. Okay, let's hear all these together. That, okay, that looks a lot better now. Now we're hitting it at about negative 12 on, on the total sound here, which ought to be a lot better of a mix. You make a lot of progress on the sprite system. Cool, man. You're at the point where you can load a shader and it, yo, sweet, loading shaders and textures. Creating a quad mesh. Uh-huh, sweet. And you can do that in less than 10 lines, nice. Yeah, buddy, cool. That's awesome.
Sweet. The first half of this, or the second half of this sound is done now. Now let's play around with this beginning bit and trying to, I'm going to synthesize something. I'm going to generate a sound that kind of sounds like this Mario Brothers power up. <laughs> I love that sound. Such a good sound, right? This sound sounds a lot like um, it's using a bullet, bullet, bullet. It's like a pure sine wave that has been really um, arpeggiated and then played at three different notes like da 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 and then it's the arpeggiators what's giving that So let's start with the massive I already got one here. Let's just use this one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate this. Duplicate, uh, duplicate the sound effect. I'm gonna mute the Mario. Thanks, Rocket. Okay, that's the old sound. Let's turn this into uh, three notes. Let's get it more of a pure sine wave and a way up high. Simple sound right here. This is C D E. La Guru STB image, nice GLM, cool. So if you do, um, do you have to use some kind of sound library like OpenAL or something like that? I mean, you know, like a, the lower level libraries, sound libraries. I don't know how that I don't know how that works. I think you would have to use something like OpenAL, right? Or some kind of low-level library. All right, now it's an arpeggiate it. Arpeggiate the shit out of this thing, man! I'm gonna start with a, a MIDI effect rack. What this does is just throws in kind of like a default arpeggiator or whatever. Okay, this is the box 16th. Some bounty chords. Well, it's nice. Bounty chords. <laughs> I just left it going. I 
like that one. I haven't looked into that in depth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think you'd have to just uh, talk to something. Do I have any tips for getting good at pixel art? Yes, I do. Watch a lot of people do pixel art. That's the biggest tip I can give you. That's how I got good at pixel art. I never even did pixel art, really. I just watched people do it. And you can you don't even have to necessarily watch people do pixel art. Just watch people do art in general. Um, look at the process. Look at the process of how people structure their artistic creations, how they work, how their process works. What do they start with? How does the background get turned into a foreground, you know? And you can, and the, uh, the biggest tip I give you is to watch it in fast. Watch it is speed art. So just, if I were you, I would go on to YouTube and just type speed art. <clears throat> Let's see what we can find here. Speed pixel art. There you go, check us out. Here's a Grim Reaper. This is probably an excellent little thing to watch in speed. Yeah, see this is beautiful. You watch it, you watch speed art and it's it like speeds it up. It's all in time lapse and stuff like that. So you don't have to wait. You know, it's not it's not boring. You can get a really quick overview of how people do stuff. See how quickly you can see what's going on here? You can get a good feel for the process. The process is the most important part here. It's how, what's the process of making good pixel art? And you can do this with all kinds of art, you know, speed painting, just type in speed painting. I did this a lot before I ever, ever did pixel art. I looked up a lot of speed painting. Right, yeah, 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 losing a library on top, like, uh-huh. Look at this, look how fast this guy's going. This will teach you a lot, Rocket Bunny, just watching this stuff. And then eventually, yes, you do got to get in, you got to get some pixel art software that you're comfortable with, and you got to get a method that you're comfortable with, like, and you got to get some tools you're comfortable with, like, you got to get... Either you got either got to get comfortable using the mouse to do pixel art, which I don't recommend, or you can get you got to get yourself a graphics tablet. It only they only cost like fifty to seventy five bucks to get a good little graphics tablet, and then get used to using it. You got to really get comfortable with your your tool, either the mouse or a graphics tablet or keyboard. I guess there's probably some kind of keyboard e pixel art software out there somewhere. What's this guy gonna make? What's this guy gonna make? He looks intense. I'm skipping to the end. Come on, show the damn painting. Was that it? That's all I painted? That's not really speed art. I'm talking about watching like speed painting time lapse. Here you go. This is probably a great one to watch here. Yeah, here we go. This is what I'm talking about. This is going to turn into an amazingly beautiful painting and it's only going to cost you like five minutes of your life to soak up this great artist's techniques. This is how you get good at art, man. This is all you got to do. Watch other people. Soak up their processes. Don't even think about it. Don't think about what's going on. It's mostly an intuitive process anyways. See what I mean? See how I did those nice little outlines? Dry brush is, a is an excellent way to do quick ass paintings. The dry brush is actually a technique where even though he's in time lapse right now, the, using this dry brush technique right here is actually a lot faster than regular painting. And he uses a lot less paint. See how quickly he did this? 
Look how fast this is actually going. I mean, I'm sure he's probably like a, at least a half an hour into his painting already here, but, and you see how he's using a reference image? See how he's got that picture of J Scarlett Johansson on an iPad right there? That's the, those are the kind of techniques you pick up. See, artists use a lot of reference images. All, pretty much all great artists use reference images. You know, I mean, this, the truly the, the most genius artists out there in the world don't necessarily need to use reference images. But that's because they've used reference images so many times that they're so awesome at it already. They don't really need to anymore. They can go and create things like this from their, from their head. I mean, I'm generalizing, of course, here, but that's, that's you know, kind of how it is. Is this helping, Ragga Bunny? Oh, that was kind of cool. This, these descending chords. You made a gif. You made a gif. Yes. Let's see this gif. Cool, dude. Yeah, man. Yeah, I like these little blocks. I like the mean block. The mean block's funny. That's awesome. Look at that, dude. It's your own window. Nice black background. Nice start. Oh, and that one's keyboard controlled? Beautiful. Already got input hooked up. Congrats, dude. That's you make us a progress. House here in the I hate house music. Yeah, I hate that one. That was kinda cool though. But I like this descending one. Okay, let's see that. It's maybe a little too bassy, but let's see what it sounds like. Whoops, no, don't run. Stop, don't run. Duh. Export first. Export the sound, then run. Hmm. Okay, was it that was it this octave? I can't really tell what was there was something wrong there. Nice, next up's instancing, sprite batching, sprite atlases, cool. What's up, Zilton? How's it going, Zilton? What you been doing, Zilton? What's new, Zilton? How did I turn my terminal red? It's just an option. Terminal preferences. See? It's got some profiles. I chose the red one. Really simple. Let's try it a little higher. Let's try an octave up. Biddle, biddle, biddle. Actually, I don't even need to octave it up there. We can octave it up in massive, because that's where we all want to start focusing. Yeah, here we go. Start with zero. Yeah. Mm. Huh. This might be the wrong kind of arpeggiator. It's going great. It's going great. Nah, I think this going downward thing is, uh, oh, there is distance. Let's go upwards. 
Why not move all this to Adobe Edition and use the maximum pain option? Does it have a maximum pain option? <laughs> no, I don't like working in Adobe Audition. It's very, it's so limited. Audition is cool. Audition's cool for like working on like a sound effect, like one single wave file. But when it comes to actually working, it's not really a, it's not really a, a DAW. It is a DAW, but it's like it's not enough of a DAW that it's I'm comfortable with to really use. Ableton is awesome. I really love using Ableton. So I prefer to have all my sound effects as Ableton projects, and then I can pretty much do anything with those. Like the EQ, the EQ is really weak here. The spectrum analyzer is really weak in Audition as well. It's kind of only good for editing wave files, in my in my opinion. But maybe you weren't being serious. Were you being serious? I don't know. I don't, is, you mean maximum gain? Is there really a maximum pain option? There really is a maximum pain option? Oh. Really? What does the maximum pain option do? Alright, so I'm gonna play the, the Mario sound again and figure out what it is about this. It's so nice. Well, it's 8-bitty, that's for sure. I wonder if we could do a little redux on this. And it also feels a little bit loud. You like Fruity Loops? Nice. Fruity's great. So it's self-explanatory. It boosts volume to the point where it's painful. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's great. Is that a... I've never seen it before. Is it one of the favorites? I don't know. I think I should play with this massive part. Let's um, I'm gonna check this in though so far. It's a pretty good start. Got a little pregator going. There's a worse version called Meltdown. This is decay do. Oh. Okay. Ted's this is permanent strength weed. <laughs> awesome. Trigger in the note. 
Oh yeah, the note. Okay. Oh, it's like a preset? Maybe it's under amplitude, amplify. No. Amplitude, dyn hard limiter, maybe? <laughs> that one's a dead horse. <laughs> I've never looked at all these presets before. Maybe it's under normalize. No. I don't know, it's probably in there somewhere. Challenge working with GLs, learning the calls, yeah. Uh-huh. Element buffer objects. Let's you emit duplicate vertices in a mesh. Oh. At first it causes the UVs to get all screwed up. Mm. You had to bind the EBO. Yeah, right. It's a tricky little it's a tricky world, right? So wait, what's what's isn't Vulcan the is Vulcan the new OpenG what is Vulcan? Is it is it possible to make games entirely in Vulcan these days, or is like you pretty much still have to do OpenGL and and if you want to support Vulcan too? Oh, it's around the base boost. It might be under Filter one of these, maybe. Not that one. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a successor, but these. I think you still have to do support OpenGL though, right? If you want your game to run on most people's devices. It's possible? Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is triggering chords. Okay, that's what's going on. That's up. Why does down still sound up? Up and down. Oh, probably because my distance is put only up. Diverge, converge, no, all these are the same. Let's just stick it, keep it on up. Ooh, let's swing the groove a little. No. Hmm, no. The way Vulcan works. It's closer to how the actual hardware works. Yeah, that's cool. What's up, crazy guy? Welcome to the stream, crazy guy. It's based around command buffers. Oh, that's how that's how Coco's 2DX works lately. They have command buffers. So, like the command buffer, what it does is it it like at least in Coco's 2DX, it it um there's a thread which runs where you basically have your main game thread, which creates command buffers. Every time your, your, your tick runs or your animation tick runs, you upload some command buffers. And then, um, when the, uh, when the, the, the GPU thread essentially gets around to running the command buffers, it does. And, it, and the GPU thread can then can run things as fast as it can. And your game thread can kind of run in its own thread. Maybe that's how it's it's meant to be, yeah? I don't know. Might be. What is target? 
target do? Still don't know. Let's try a little bit of randomness here. This could be fun. Random can be crazy cool, but sometimes really weird. It's in the distortion. Oh, in distortion, that makes sense. Where is distortion? Ah, here we go. Maximum pain! Let's see what it sounds like. Oh, damn, sorry guys. Oh, that hurt my ears. Probably hurt your guys' ears too. <laughs> it was painful. I'm really sorry to have brought anybody else into that pain. God damn. Oh. That was my fault. Whew. Yeah, sorry. 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 <laughs> it's... Hey, it lived up to its name, right? Maximum Pain? Jeez. Oh, see that random really did do some weirdness there. What about Chaos? Ah! <laughs> this is not what I was thinking. Made you jump? It spooked a lot of people. It spooked me too. My ears were like, ah! Okay, this is not what, I'm, what I meant. All right, um, now I'm gonna start playing with the massive, the character of the actual sound, because I think this arpeggiator is pretty good the way it is. It's not exactly like the Mario sound, but it's, it never was meant to be. This is meant to be its own unique aesthetic and all that. So I'm gonna play with the actual massive sound here. Right now I'm using a pure square wave. I wanna use a sine wave. Ultimate Failures is a really fun one. Sounds fun. OpenGL is based around the odd state machine concept. Mm. Binding buffers and arrays, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, every time you want to do something in OpenGL, you got to like set everything up again. You know, it's like, um, I'm going to be editing this, and then you send it some blob, some, some more state information and all that. Yeah, that's, I, I never, I never thought of it that way as it being kind of like a state machine, but yeah. How did I do the sounds after the doo-doo-doo? There's a lot of things in here. There's um, a randomized sound. I just made it the fixer. Let me, let me it's just randomized. I did a randomize, randomize, randomize until I got that, and then I mutated it a little bit. And then these other ones are other sounds I've used already in the game. This is the meditate sound effect part of it. But it's just transposed downward, so it sounds a bit unique. And this is also the puzzle sound from the game already but I played with, of course, the, the volume envelopes. So mixing together those three sounds gave that, that ending bit. What's that? It's Befixer, man. It's a free sound. It's a free th thing. Befixer. It's Befixer.net. B F X R. It's for Windows or Mac. Yep, Befixer. You can see it's even got its own web version. See this? Befixer.net. Yeah, that's a fun one to play with. Ah, 
this is gonna be kind of crazy. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm gonna. The best way to do this is to. Whoops. Not again. The best way to do this is to. I'm gonna try exporting a few different um, of these character sound effects here. I mean, character meaning the character of the sound, and then trying it against the animation to see what one which one feels right. You'll be sure to check out Bethesda.net. It's just, yeah, it's not OO, totally. It's just based around passing handles, yeah. Yep, handle, which is just an integer. And then you tell it to upload the image data, right. No, that was too toy. Sounds too much like a little toy. Be something wrong with our this arpeggiator too. It's like nah. Yeah, maybe this. You heard Dreadkiss has more OO style? I think it does. I used to use it a long, long time ago. Long time ago. This was like 1990s. And it was OO then. And they kept extending it and changing it and stuff like that. Yeah, crazy guy, but Fixer's great. You should totally check out a Fixer. It's very fun to play with. Great for making 8-bit sounds. Yeah, airy, mystical, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to give it that character here. The feeling of... Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Zilton. Thanks for, for clarifying what the feeling should be. Airy and mystical is a good, it's a good target. Hmm. Yeah. OpenGL. It's nice how OpenGL is kind of like C-ish. I like that part. Yeah, this is a lot more like what I was imagining. This is a lot better so far. Maybe we'll keep it on this grain. And especially with this arpeggiator being a little faster, it really helps it. Let's give it a little more airy and mysticalness, though. Filter would really help with that. Also, some white noise, maybe, or some kind of noise. No, not, not white noise. Maybe some brown. Maybe some. I don't know. I'm gonna start playing around until something sounds cool. Sound like a harpsichord. I bet you a redux or something like that, like a bit crusher, might be cool. Yeah, already that sounds pretty cool. Let's give it another another oscillator too, and a pure sine wave. Yeah, 
that helps. And then I'll offset them both a little bit so they have a little bit of um, eh, wiggles at the end of them. Mm, yeah, that sounded better. Yes. This bit crusher is pretty good. Oh, it's clipping though. Pressure is what give it, gives it the dirtiness. Uh, let's try some reverb and some maybe some dimension expander. That'll give it some airiness. That's way too big. Maybe too dense, I'm not sure. good and then some dimension expander maybe some filter It's kind of cool doing a little LFO maybe on this. Uh, way less ratio though. Why is that doing anything? Oh. Ha! <laughs> That's funny. If that's gonna sound right or not, so I'm gonna. This is one of those things you gotta see. See it, play it, feel it. Someone fist bumped you and you didn't even know them? What does it mean? Were they like really friendly? Were they trying to make a friend? I'm definitely thinking this LFO filter thing is weird. Maybe I should play around with the overall shape of the sound now. Ooh, there we go. This really changes the character here, the release. Here, I did not do anything.
Give me some feedback. Why is it stepping over its own feet here? Oh, maybe. Hmm. I forgot to check on the voicing. It might be doing. It is polyphonic. I'm gonna try monophonic. <laughs> what? This has totally changed it. That sounds kind of Mario there now. Not not exactly what I'm intending, but what's well, the sound songbringer? So far, it's not really sounding songbringer yet, except for the end. Actually, that wasn't bad. That could work. I wonder if this. I wonder what this feels like though after you beat a boss. So uh, I'm gonna go beat the first boss. See what that sounds like when you beat the boss. You grab it some courage. I got crazy powerful items, so this should be pretty easy. I got the oh. I already got the life container. Duh! It was the the platform was sitting there the whole time. Okay, turn that one off. Save anyway. Wait, no, revert.
<laughs> that kind of worked. Kind of works. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, uh, I'm gonna go get some dinner now. Let my let my brain and my ears, especially, rest on this because this is sounding pretty good so far. It actually felt all right in the game. It probably just needs that last little touches of something. I don't know what that something is yet, but resting and relaxation always makes it clear whatever that is coming back to it with a fresh set of ears or a fresh set of eyes or fresh attitude, fresh brain, whatever you want to call it. It just always works, man. It always helps. Another little half an hour and this will be like a dope sound effect. So I'm really excited to have this effect almost done for the epic, you know, feeling of gaining courage. So um, thanks for watching this uh, stream and I appreciate you all. And um, I'll be back more times this week, I'm sure. So, uh, everybody, thank you, and we'll check you all out next time.